you, you, he was my greatest uh, blessing when I first came up to this church because he would always come at nine o'clock in the morning uh, and uh, and start playing the piano, and, uh, just taking me through uh, many many old hymns uh, of the church. Uh, <coughs> In my early days of pastoring, I would go into the sanctuary of whatever church I was <coughs> was pastoring, and I would uh, just sing through the hymn book. Uh, and, and so I, I I learned to, in many ways, memorize most of the hymns. And uh, although usually it's the the first verse you memorize, there was a cartoon one time about the Presbyterian hymn book. Okay, and it was this way: it was verse one. Verse two, verse three, verse four, <laughs> which was a really cute cartoon. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, God, God has uh, has blessed the joy of singing in my heart, even though uh, I, I really don't sing very well that I know of. But uh, but I survive, and um, it's just a blessing to sing, and it was a blessing to come and hear Bob play all the time. So um, I think we're all here. Um, do, let, me, uh, let, me, let me start. I want to I read this poem, and then uh, Petra, I'm going to have you come up, and then we'll have some others share. But uh, I don't know if you've ever heard this, uh, this poem. But I heard it one time, um, a gentleman named uh, James Weldon Johnson uh, wrote this poem, and I've uh, twisted it around a little bit to, to fit Bob. Uh, uh, but uh, here's the way it goes. Weep not. Yes. Weep not. He is not dead. He's resting in the bosom of Jesus. Heartbroken people weep no more. Grief stricken weep no more. Those who feel left and lonely weep no more. He's only just gone home. Three weeks ago on Sunday morning, God was looking down from his great high heaven, looking down on all his children, and his eye fell on our friend Bob Hughes. Torn between his love of life and wishing to go home to heaven and see Jesus and Dolores, his wife of 58 years, and God's big heart was touched with pity, with everlasting pity. <coughs> And God sat back on his throne and he commanded that tall, bright angel standing at his right hand, Call me death! And that tall, bright angel cried in a voice that broke like a clap of thunder, Call death! Call death! And the echo sounded down the streets of heaven till it reached away back to that shadowy place where death waits with his pale white horses. And death heard the summons and he leaped on his fastest horse, pale as a sheet in the moonlight, up the golden street death galloped, and the hooves of his horse struck fire from the gold, but they didn't make no sound. Up death <coughs> rode to the great white throne and waited for God's command. And God said, go down, death, go down. Go down to Bonnie Doon, California, down to Santa Cruz County, and find Brother Bob. He's borne the burden and the heat of the day. He's labored long in my vineyard, and he's tired. He's weary. Go down, Death, and bring him to me. Death didn't say a word, but he loosed the reins on his pale white horse, and he clamped the spurs to his bloodless sides, and out and down he rode, through heaven's pearly gates, past suns and moons and stars, on death road, leaving the lightning's flash behind. 
straight down he came. While those were watching round Bob's bed, he turned his eyes and looked away. He saw what we couldn't see. He saw old death coming like a falling star. But death didn't frighten our Bob. He looked to, he looked to Bob like a welcome friend. And he whispered to us, I'm going home smiled and closed his eyes, and death took him up like a baby and lay him in his icy arms, and he didn't feel no chill. And death began to ride again up beyond the evening star into the glittering light of glory onto the great white throne. And there he laid our friend Bob, the loving breast of Jesus. <coughs> And Jesus took his own hand and wiped away his tears, smoothed the furrows from his face, and the angels sang a little song, and Jesus rocked him in his arms and kept a saying, Take your rest. Take your rest. Weep not. He is not dead. He is resting in the bosom of Jesus. <coughs> Hi. Um, it's so nice of you all to come. Of course, Bob's touched all of our lives somehow. So nice to see you, Tom. That's great. Probably. Thank you. And I'm sure Bob would really appreciate all of you being here. And I see San, um, uh, Lynn. Bob's nurse is here. Um, isn't that great? Oh, See how much he's touched you. <laughs> and thank you all so much. And um, I just want to say from my heart, you know, Bob has been such an amazing close friend, more than any family member could ever be for Dutch and I and our boys. And we've known him for a long time. And um, well, I met Bob when. Um, in 1987, when we first moved up to Bonnie Dune, and I was walking with the boys, and we ended up on Robles, and we saw these two little miniature horses in the meadow, mm -hmm. and there was Bob, I didn't know him then, and I said, oh my gosh, can we come see your horses? Like, of course. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got to know him. Mm -hmm. That started a friendship. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, Dutch knew his wife Dolores, because she worked at Lockheed. Mm -hmm. So Dutch knew Dolores, I knew Bob. The one day, Bob and Dolores driving our driveway together, and I said, oh, Dutch, how do you know her? And he said, well, how do you know him? <laughs> it's kind of funny. And so we've been friends for a long time, and I was thinking about what to say today. I could talk for hours about all the million things that we've done together. We spent my, many, many hours together doing lots of different things over the years, and um, just a few things. So I remember, when we were living on Molina, <clears throat> we had a brand new baby grand piano, and Bob came over, sat down, read some music, played it, and it's like, oh my gosh, I was so impressed. And that's the first time I heard him play piano, and he was, he can read any, if he can read the piano music, he can play it. He was, he was very, very amazing, amazingly good at playing the piano. And, and he entertained us a lot of times at his own home, playing piano, little concerts for us, and and one time, Bob and I added up how many pianos he's played around the county. And also in Illinois. He's from Illinois. I don't know if you knew that. And um, he played over 15 pianos around the county. Different senior centers, different gatherings. <coughs> your house, he's played your piano. He's played the closest piano. And it's, it's funny, when you're, when you're playing an instrument, like a guitar, you bring your guitar with you. But you can't bring your piano with you. So he played lots of pianos. And he's actually said, this piano at the church is Amazingly, it's always kept its tune, but you really love playing this piano. Yeah. And um, anyways, Bob was from Illinois, and he grew up there, went to high school <coughs> there. And um, I remember he told us that his uncle, after graduating high school, gave him a gold watch, and he wore that watch his entire life, oh. up until like two months ago. Oh. That's a long time. Yeah. That was pretty cool. And um, we never met his parents, but his parents did move out to California after Bob and Dolores moved here. They moved and lived in SoCal or Capitola for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got to know his mom a little bit. 
and Dolores um, and Bob, when they got married, um, he tells a little story that she, he grew up in town, and Dolores grew up on a farm. And she said, if she's going to ma marry him, he, she's not going to marry a man who's never been on a horse. <laughs> so, he got on a horse, and then he got off the horse. <laughs> that's, that's his horse story. But even though they, together, they've owned horses, owned lots of different animals, and Bob loved animals of all kinds, and he's fed so many animals. Uh, every morning, he spent lots of hours and money on bird seed feeding the quail and the rabbits and squirrels outside there, what they call the million dollar window of his house because there was all that activity of animals and birds. <coughs> and um, he spent a lot of time loving animals. And one thing about Bob we had in common was gardening. He taught me a lot about gardening. And in his property, a four, thousand, four acres, sorry, not four thousand, four acres of property that Doris <coughs> and him planted lots and lots of trees and bushes and he knew all the Latin names to everything. Mm -hmm. And he could just, like another language, he could speak Latin. And mm -hmm. His favorite Latin word, botanical word, was Ampelopsis brevibedunculata. <laughs> <laughs> he taught me that. <laughs> that was his favorite Latin botanical word. But Bob and I spent so many time, days shopping at garden stores all over in Gilroy, San Jose, all around the county, buying all kinds of plants. and. And um, I don't want to go on too long because I know a lot of people, he's touched a lot of people and have a lot of things to say too. But he's been such a close friend and we did so many things and, you know, just we went well watching together and, and had, went Christmas light, you know, looking around the county together and over in San Jose. Bob would always, he was very meticulous and would write the whole map of where we were going to go see the Christmas lights. <laughs> we did that for years. And, he was a very regimented person. He, you know, he's good at taking his vitamins every day <laughs> and um, doing things kind of regimented. You know, that's kind of problems like that. And um, I remember when we went to that well watching, and then afterwards we had dinner, and we stopped at that pottery place near Ma Moss Landing. Mm -hmm. And we're all looking around, Dutch and I, Bob and Dolores, looking around all the stuff. We never bought anything, but there was this really cute ceramic pig. And we're just like, wow, that pig looks so real. You know, we just really admired it, but we didn't buy it. We just laughed. And a couple of weeks later, I was watering my garden. I was like, oh my gosh, there's that pig in the bushes. <laughs> 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 and they brought that pig for me because they knew how much I liked it. <laughs> so that's the way they did things. I still have that wonderful pig oh, in my right. garden. <laughs> They're really funny. Bob had an amazing sense of humor. <clears throat> And I don't. I know I've told you this before, but we spent oh, I don't know how many hours, but at least ten years of playing Scrabble every Sunday and every Wednesday night. Dinner Scrabble, dinner Scrabble, and I've kept the Scrabble sh score sheets all these years. And they're, they're in the Kirk house. So you can go and look through them. <laughs> Scrabble, 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 and I think we'd be smarter from playing Scrabble. But you know, as far as I know, it's like five-letter words. So. <laughs> um, Anyways, that was a lot of fun. They really get to know somebody spending that much time together. And, and then um, also, I think we got really even closer when there was the fire, of course, and I called up Bob in the middle of the night, time to evacuate. So we all evacuated together, and we ended up at the, um, Howard Johnson's motel, and Bob had this funky wow. little duffel bag that said, wow, Bob, where'd you get that? And he found it up in the attic. It was probably from high school or something. Yes. <laughs> so old. And all he had was a change of, you know, socks and shaving kit and his pajamas. And that was all he brought. And, of course, he lost his house in the fire. Um, we all know that. And he lost just everything. But we did happen to go up the next day with a little bit of a panic. And we went around the house and go, Bob, what do you want? He goes, nothing. Oh, I don't want anything. I said, Bob, let's take something. And I grabbed the Western Guarding book, grabbed the picture of the horses, Dolores, and he grabbed the music off the piano, and that was it. Wow. <laughs> Meanwhile, thinking back, we didn't have to panic. We could have filled up this truck, but we don't really know that yeah, thing we're going to lose. And we've done this before with evacuation. It's a lot of work. And, but Bob really did lose everything. He lost his house and his garage, his barn, and a lot of things. And there's some pictures on the, the film video in there, too. A little bit, not too much. but. You know, one thing about Bob, he's gone through a lot of stuff that we've been through with him, too, different crises of 
you know, losing his beautiful dogs that were like his kids to him, and then to Loris, and then one horse after the other passed away, and then he lost his house, mm -hmm. then he lost his health, and, and then COVID came. And a lot of crises and bodges picked himself up and kept going. He never yeah. dwelt on anything. He was never, never complained about anything. Even my cooking, he never complained about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but he was always cheerful. You can all remember his beautiful smile. Yeah. Always cheerful. Yeah. And I never heard him say a bad thing about anybody. He never swore. <laughs> you know, he, he's just always kind, always upbeat, and um, just a <coughs> loving, gracious person. He was so good to us, and we loved him so much, and spent so many days together doing stuff. And, I could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> we can hear more stories over the years about Bob, and, and uh, well, I'll let somebody else speak for a little bit. And um, but I just I'm going to miss him. Dutch and I and our family are going to miss him. And um, anyway, I think that's about it to close with. Thank you. Thank you. Sat down. I'm not sure I'm get up. Okay. Okay. But. <laughs> Anybody else have a story to tell? No, I don't. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, as you mentioned, Bob would get up here early and he'd be playing. And sometimes I get up here early too. And of course, I'd go up and we'd I'd be singing with him at the piano. And well, we'd do a hymn I like. Bob, let's do a hymn you like. I never knew any of the hymns he picked out of the <laughs> <laughs> book. But, but eventually he said, Well, why don't you come over? And I, I'll treasure this. And so I came over, we both were in Bonnie Dune, so I came over one afternoon, and there he was playing the piano, and we played for, I don't know, an hour, two hours, and he'd just pull out one song after another, I mean, <coughs> and I would just sing along with sight reading, like these things, and he'd be playing uh -huh. along, and his smile, that beaming smile while we were doing that, uh -huh. so I treasure that time. Uh -huh. I treasure that time. Anybody else? Well, these are actually things Petra told me, but it just so um, expresses Bob's sense of humor. And that's when she first said, will you come play at the church? He said, well, how long is this gig? <laughs> and then the last one she shared with me was that he said, I've been replaced by a 12-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just, like she says, he was just a positive angel among us. <laughs> That's great. Let's see. There was somebody back here. I was here just well. saying, I think it was last summer. My mom died a few years ago, but she left a big box of sheet music, which I know Petra and Bob would always go to the second-hand stories looking at. So I gave him the box, and mostly from the 1940s. So one day, I, he was going to play a song. He created this beautiful playlist, you know, from that era, songs he thinks I would like, and you know, and then every song had a little, you know, little story before it. Well, this song was written by, and so anyway, that was my last really special memory that he played my own little private concert with my mom's little sheet music. It was just so sweet. Anyway. That's great. Yes, sir. Hi. Um, I worked with Bob for many years at the Sentinel. I came in the Sentinel in 84, and uh, he was the controller then. I came in as the general manager. And he may be able to play the piano good, but he could dance with the numbers pretty good, too. <laughs> <laughs> so he was there until his retirement, and he was just a heck of a friend. And. Uh, Really loved by the staff and the Sentinel. Mm -hmm. Thank you for saying something. That's great. Anybody else? Georgia? Yeah. Okay. After Marion left, uh, Marion used to come up and turn the heat on for us in the morning. After Marion left, I used to come up here and turn the heat on. But Bob used to come in an hour or two early and just play the piano. Mm -hmm. So I was stuck in the back door one time. I was sitting here. He was playing jazz. <laughs> <laughs> and I sat there for the longest time waiting and I walked out. His ears lit up. He was he was so embarrassed. <laughs> I love that, Bob. <laughs> but I just saw another side of Bob that day. That's great. That's great. Yeah, so um, 
a whole lot I can say about Bob. Um, at some point, before Dolores passed away, I, I thought, oh, I'm going to go say hi to Bob, and he plays the piano, and I played the piano when I was growing up. And so, I said, hey, you know, and something about some classical piece, and Bob kind of didn't have any interest in it, and then, but I, you know, I'd kind of go up to him and say, hey, I was working on this piece, and I'd go, oh, I think I played that in college, or something like that. <laughs> um, and then after Dolores passed away, I, you know, somehow we started talking, and, and I said, well, you, you know, I, I come over and play some piano. And so I, I went over and, um, and, and played piano with him in his house, and, and um, developed a, a friendship. Um, we, I mean, I don't know if it was, about monthly, and I guess for the last, whatever, six years since Dolores passed, I've gone and played the piano with him. Um, and it's been really special. Um, it's amazing to have just a friend who, uh, you know, obviously we're just completely different places in life and experiences are different, but, you know, he would just, he always loved to hear my kind of war stories from court or whatever, and always about how my family is doing, and he'd razz me. He had, he had a great sense of humor. <laughs> And he was just quiet and humble. He really was a, a man from another generation. You know, he, he didn't drink. He never, he never had a sip of alcohol in his life. Um, and like uh, Patrick said, he never cursed. And he did play pool. He was a great <laughs> pool player. And he loved pool. So he had, you know, he was a person. He experienced a lot of life, but he, um, he just went through very humbly. You know, it's the meek, the meek will inherit the earth. But what I wanted to say was that he would razz me. I'd come and try to play these new pieces in Chopin or whatever. And he'd say, "Well, that's very, very good." Now, I don't, I don't want to offend you, but I'm going to play something someone wants to hear. He's <laughs> <laughs> a good old guy, and I'm there. I mean, it was just, it was just really special. Um, and truly, he, I mean, it's like just, you know, he, um, I, my. My piano playing, which was always kind of cobbled together from lessons when I was a kid and kind of keeping it together, so I was in my mid-30s when I started visiting Bob. My piano playing, because of interest and in his influence, has gone like from here, well, it's not, I mean, it's still down here, from here to here. It's completely changed how I look at it. His ability to read music, like you're saying, is amazing. You can just read it, the ability for him to read and fill things in where, there, where he couldn't quite see the notes, but he knew what would work. And you're just very fluid with it. There's a whole other way of playing. Um, and the last thing that I will share is that when I first went and visited him, he had this little upright piano over here. And then the second time I went and visited him, he's like, well, this is great. And I'm like, yeah, I really enjoy this and this. And then the third or fourth time I went, he had a brand new cherry Yamaha grand piano. <laughs> that was perfect. And I'm just like, what in the world are you, you know? And then he's playing it, and it's just beautiful. Well, I gotta have the guy up here and tune it. It's not quite right. <laughs> and then you have the guy coming back and forth from Santa Cruz like every couple of weeks to tune it. Um, and his his home is beautiful. It kind of had similar wood paneling to this, but a little bit darker. And he had the mementos of you know a life of, of at that point eighty something years, and of a marriage of that many years. And he had you know different like plates kind of hung that and you, maybe you get collecting travel into Hawaii or, or wherever. These things all full. And what he had was this credenza, probably about as wide as one length of chairs, <coughs> or four chairs, or maybe a little longer, double high. So maybe this entire span full of his piano music. And it included the piano music that his father had given him. This so is his piano music going back to the 1910s and everything. And he had this collection of red, kind of like hard bound with that old binding with the kind of cloth almost uh -huh. binding um, of these piano books. And I was playing something one time and he took one out. And he said, well, I believe I played that. And he opened it up, <laughs> and it was it had that piece in it. These were his college piano coursework books mm -hmm. that had the pencil notations of when he would assigned it, you know, sem spring semester 1951 or whatever. Wow. And he had, I think there were about 12 or 15 of them. <clears throat> and so he... he 
the story in the movie would be more sync like this, but at some point you said, well, why don't you, you know, take this and you play on that. You know, I'd be interested for you to be playing on that. You borrow that or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so I took it. And, and then, yeah, his house burned down. And all the piano music was gone. And the beautiful grand piano and every oh. memento. And I brought that back to him. Oh. And he said I could keep it. So I still have it. Uh. <laughs> anyway, a piece to, to our friend Bob. Uh, a couple more. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Marty um, Browning. I'm the circulation director for the Santa Cruz Sentinel. Um, I worked with Bob for 20 plus years. Um, I was singularly stupid about the financial side. I mean, I could deliver a paper, I could sell a newspaper, I could do it all except. He'd ask me a question about the accounting side, and I'd just look at him. <laughs> and he'd say, kid, you're going to have to get this. <laughs> he'd sit me down for 15 minutes, and he'd explain to me how these things were amortized. And you couldn't say that that person gave you $100 yet, because they didn't. They were going to give you 20 cents a day until they reached that $100. <laughs> and, um, he, he was special. He... He only got mad at me once <laughs> in 20-something years, and that was when I came up to get a file, a monthly file, and said, I, you know, I got the circulation auditor down here. He needs to see this. And he says, we'll bring it back. And I did. <laughs> and so every time after that that I had to look at one of those little packets, he would say, look at it up here. <laughs> You're not taking it to your office. No. He was sweet, and he was special. And he always called Dolores my wife. Um, I just learned her name today. Oh, wow. Um, because he would say, my wife, my darling wife, my wife and I worked in the garden this weekend, or my wife and I are going to do this. And um, he was a gentleman. He called me in October. He left me a voicemail message um, and said, hey, kid, call me back. Uh, I just want to talk. Let's let's reminisce about the old days and mm -hmm. and what the Sentinel used to be and hey, what it is now. Call <laughs> 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 me back, <laughs> and I did. And we had, uh, took a chunk out of my day to just mm. reminisce about the old days. Mm. He was special. Thank you. Mm. One more. Well, well, I, I'd like you? to say something. Okay, then, um, then we'll have the choir. The choir's a, a special Okay, um, COVID has changed everything for me. My habits changed, but before COVID, I was part of the early morning group. We would, the choir would come to sing. <coughs> I was usually here early. And so I had all these years with Bob before church. But after church, because I'm the treasurer, so I go up to and collect the money. Um, and I think that Bob understood that all the books have to balance, spiritually as well as uh, uh, financially. And we would have little conversations like that. Yeah, Bob, the book's got to balance something. And, mm -hmm. and um, just like that, he was the consummate gentleman. And, uh, so I don't know how many years, um, right up there, a private time with Bob, and uh, I can just, everything that everybody said about him, he's a very special man, um, and I'm going to really miss him. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of gentlemen, I think you wore a tie to church up until just about a year ago. I must have had a bad influence. <laughs> Dutch? Yeah, I'd just like to say, um, he was so generous. I mean, every time I mentioned something, I'd say, hey, you know, the, the, the tower out there looks a little dangerous. Get on it, Dutch. What do you want? How much you want? Oh. The doors here, you know. I said, you know, there's plywood doors anyway, right, for that church. And he goes, mm -hmm. what kind of wood you want? Let's do it. He said, I'll take care of everything. Wow. Trees needed to be trimmed and... And stuff needs to be done out there. He got Javier, his guy that he's had for years. He's super generous to him. Mm. And he says, what do you think needs to be done? And he would just get it done. Mm. Him and his wife gave to animal um, 
protection uh, places all the time. Very, very generous man, him and his wife. They were just too nice. <laughs> so it was a pleasure for us to have him with us. Yeah. Thank you. He's, he's lived with them for the last four well, years. After his house burned down, he moved into our a little apartment that we have. Uh, not a little apartment, but anyway. First thing he did was got a bike grand piano brought upstairs. <laughs> so he played that every day for hours. He was just good. And then after, after he had his heart attack, um, I told myself, build you an elevator to get you up. Oh. But he insisted on taking the stairs all the way to the end. He would take it and stop and then go up. But uh, I had an elevator built, just you know, a way to lift him with the tractor and a, and a man lift and everything. He took the railings off just so he could go up and go up. He kept saying, no, I, I want to be able to go up there. So yeah. the rule was he couldn't go without one of us going with him in case he fell. But mm -hmm. um, he was very adamant about that piano. Mm -hmm. And then when he had when he had the heart attack, uh, he moved in. And um, he, he, he had more energy after his heart attack, I think, than yeah. before. I mean, before, before he was doing gardening in our place. Him and Petra would always be planting plants. and. Mm -hmm. But after the heart attack, he, he just he he went shopping with Petra. He stopped the gardening, but he would still go up there and play that piano all the way up, almost to the end. There. Yeah, and it was like I said, he moved into our house at that point, and mm -hmm. for a, uh, almost a year. And uh, Lynn was one of the first people that came to. What an amazing person! And mm -hmm. hospice was just oh. extremely helpful, just mm -hmm. unbelievable what the nurses can do for us. Mm -hmm. And Bob just loved Lynn so yeah. much. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, it's kind of empty in the house without. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can imagine. Property, you wanted to say something. Oh, I think I just... Okay. Can I just say one thing? I want to first publicly acknowledge how grateful I am, and I know everybody is, for Petra and Dutch, mm -hmm. and how they took care of that man. Yeah. And I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. And then, um, I just feel very blessed to know him. Um, just such a gentleman and such a kindness um, and he was really, when you see those pictures of him young, oh my gosh, he was gorgeous. And Dolores, uh, he's got a picture of Dolores in this bathing suit, and she was just stunning. And then Petra told me later, we'll say it, Petra, about the uh, shoes. Dolores, there's a picture in there, but the full picture is Dolores is wearing this iridescent bathing, strapless bathing suit with a matching high heel. <laughs> yesterday how he loved uh, you know he he was a numbers man mm -hmm. and they got married in 58 1958 and they were married 58 years yeah. and he she when he when he lost her it was really <coughs> unbelievably difficult and I just so I thank you two so much for yeah. really yeah. for every everything minute was, every minute it was Good for us. Every it was wonderful. Thank you. Okay. All right, choir. Let's uh, come do that. We're going to sing his favorite song after the choir sings. Is that the way? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that.
God will take care of you. God will take care of you. It's a hint. It's a hint. 47. Number 47 in uh, Brown. In Father, we are thankful to have known Bob. We're thankful for the joy of his life and the many stories of, of what he has done and how he has touched the lives of others. We're thankful for the stories we'll continue to tell as time goes on, uh, remembering uh, how he has touched our lives. We, we are thankful that there is a life beyond this life that Jesus taught us about we're thankful for the fact that that is a life that is open to all who believe in Jesus and uh, desire to, to be there with him. And we are thankful, Father, for your constant and ongoing care for each and every one of us. Uh, may we find ways to trust your care more and more as we go through this life. Again, thank you for Bob. Thank you for the resurrection. Thank you for the joy of knowing wonderful people and knowing you. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we have uh, refreshments. Uh, if you want to hang around and share some more stories in.